friends. I'm so sorry. I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> uh, the stream just stopped streaming on my end. It wasn't going to all our pages. Hi, everybody. Here I am. I'm so sorry. Um, I am now waiting for my special guest to join me. But until she gets here, I just want to say hello. Thank you for taking time out of your afternoon, morning, or evening to come and chat with me. Hopefully, you have a beverage in your hand and that you are enjoying this wonderful Tuesday. Um, again, I have no clue what just happened. The internet just did some weird things. Um, I'm waiting for my special guest to join me. Hopefully she'll be here very soon. Um, but while I'm here, I get to chat with my friends. I get to talk to the crocheting sailor. Hello. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so I will say, I know you guys have, oh, she's here again. But let me just say, I know you guys have um, received some really interesting emails over the past couple of days and some fun things are happening here at Furls. As you know, I'm always really excited because everything is awesome. Everything is amazing. But tomorrow, say it with me, y'all. Tomorrow, June 8th, 2021, you do not, I repeat, you do not want to miss my live tomorrow evening, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. You don't want to miss my live. We have some amazing things that are getting ready to happen and they're going to blow your mind. So make sure you all tune in tomorrow at 8 p.m. But right now, um, I guess you guys are also aware that instead of doing cows and our fun with furls um crochet and knit group we are now releasing the full pattern all at once so that you can get your supplies you can look at the pattern you can decide if you're going to make it and we still want to have engaging conversations in the group we still want you guys to talk about the patterns that we're releasing full free patterns and today i have with me a very special guest all the way from the uk who is coming to join me and talk about the june pattern that she created specially for our uk people it's in uk terms but of course she was kind enough to write the us uh abbreviations in there as well because she's awesome um so today i'm really 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 excited to welcome michelle of dora does to my mm -hmm. live stream hey dora hello how are you i'm doing well thanks aside from the fun uh technical difficulties that i was experiencing i don't know what was going on there but here we are made it <laughs> we made it through. How are you, Dora? Introduce yourself to the audience. Tell them your name is not Dora. Your name is Michelle. <laughs> well, that's a good place to start. So that's a perfect name place. Is Michelle. Dora okay. is my nickname, which I was kind of got about 10, 15 years ago when I had a bit of an unfortunate incident at the hairdressers and looked like the, the namesake cartoon character. I had the proper Stop little. Stop it. Yep. So my friends started calling me Dora and it just sort of stuck. Um, so when I and it was around the time all the social media was coming. So I used Dora as my handle on all my social media and it just kind of went from there. And then when I launched my blog, it was just, well, it has to be Dora. Dora's kind of like my online alter ego, basically. I love it. I love it. Now, you know, you one day have to show us pictures of that infamous haircut because, you know. I think most of them have actually been deleted. There are a couple <laughs> in very early Facebook profile pictures, and that's a that's a topic. But I I cannot look bangs. Let's just put it that way. Not not yeah, doesn't work for that, me. But that's you know, adorable. Cut. It's not for you. <laughs> no, no, but you know, that's actually, it grows funny. really quickly. So. Well, thank goodness for that, because I tell you, when you have a bad haircut, it's not a good look. But you can crochet hats, so you can always just throw on a hat and keep exactly. it moving, right? And I like to crochet hats with a little bit of extra room so I can pile it all, all up. Always there you go. I like a bit of a slouchy beanie for that, that extra space. 
And I'm sure you have some of those patterns on your blog. I Talk do. about your blog a little bit. What do you have on there? So I started um, Dora Does the Blog in 2017 and there's a variety of free patterns on there. Um, I've got loads of stitch tutorials and I also really like to dig deep kind of into the nitty gritty of um, all the crochet things, how it works and just kind of unpick it. A lot of the blog posts I write are based on the problems that I had when I was learning to crochet. So things that I didn't really understand and I mm. learned through experience through trial and error because I couldn't really find either one answer or there was like five answers. So I kind of like to share that journey and the things that I did wrong and the things that work for me because everybody does it differently, but I quite like to kind of go over the options and then explain why I come to the way that I do it. I so love that yeah i it just kind of just makes makes sense for me and a lot of it is around garment design when i started because the majority of my patterns i tend to focus on garments i love designing garments okay um, and that's been quite quite a learning yeah. curve over the last three years just understanding construction the maths i'm lucky in that the kind of grading and the math side of things comes quite naturally to me. I think for me, crochet. Not for me. <laughs> and I know a lot of a lot of people really get a bit scared by the maths and they really get put off by it. But that's my job. So if you're making it, you don't need to you don't need to worry about that. Um, and right. I do write a lot of blog posts that kind of go in and explain explain some of the maths. So maybe if you want to start designing your own stuff, but you're a bit scared of of kind of gauge and you know that horrendous word that everybody runs away from um, so there's loads of like deep dive po deep dive posts on all of that and how to do some kind of basic calculations if you're just starting um but yeah the, the numbers it, it just kind of my, my brain works that way I think that's why I love crochet because I love the creative side and that you know it really captures my creative brain but the numbers really work so it just kind of brings all the stuff that I love together in one so it's yeah that's pretty cool. I, I, if you've ever watched any of my lives, if any of the folks who are watching know that I'm afraid to make clothes and to make garments. But when I was reading your pattern for the anytime cardigan, I was like, you know what? I could maybe make this. So tell us a little bit about like your inspiration for design. And then, like you said, getting into the nitty gritty, the numbers and counting and all of that scary stuff <laughs> so i my design inspiration is generally things that i want to wear that i kind of design for myself um i can be inspired by all sorts of things so it might be a pattern i see um on like i mean this is something complex but just kind of something you see in everyday life or it may be nature or some of my designs that have actually come to me I'd say in a dream but not in a dream but you know that state when you're kind of awake but not awake and your <laughs> brain is off like when you're thinking in the shower and all my best ideas come to me in the shower so i, I take love it, that yeah from all kinds water of is really inspiring i love yes. water so yeah uh, i feel like my creativity comes when i'm around a body of water or like you said in the shower sorry i no, 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 i totally agree and <laughs> actually if i go when i go on holiday which it's been a while but if you buy the sea i think that definitely has you know or, or big lakes or um it definitely has an impact that kind of freedom and relaxation i don't know it just kind of opens, settles the brain i think and i think mm -hmm. creativity comes when you're quite relaxed so when you're not really thinking about much like in the shower or when you're half asleep i think that's when your brain really runs free and kind of goes to town well that's sort of how i agree, how I, agree. I agree a hundred percent so tell us about the anytime cardigan that you were so beautifully uh modeling today <laughs> Is it rather warm weather but so this actually the original inspiration for this cardigan came from a sweater pattern that i released just over a year ago which was called the any yarn will do sweater and it was a round yoke sweater so this is made essentially it's just a, an open circle and you just increase it from the top down until you get to the um, until you get to the arms and then you split, this is called the yoke, you split the yoke and then you just work it down. So if you can make a hat, you can make this cardigan. Um, okay, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna I'm, try. 
gauge matters do your gauge swatches you can always add it as a little pocket later if you want um, <laughs> this is quite forgiving it's quite tight fitting but if you're worried mm -hmm. you can kind of maybe go up a hook size or you know relax it because if it's bigger it's you know it's fine cardigans can, are really forgiving in that respect i find mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it's also the great thing about this top down construction is you can try it on and adjust it as you work so because you're just working this bit once you get here mm -hmm. you can try and check your arms fit through the holes you can adjust that makes sense sleeves um so starting with top down is actually a really good way to start with making garments because you can you don't have to like put That's finish it. it all try it on and it doesn't fit which is so with frogging. oh my yeah. gosh the frogging oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> so painful so you, if it's not right you've only got a little bit to frog and redo you know so it's a really good way good way to start but um i love that yeah um, but before when, you go on before you go on i want to let the audience know that this pattern is available and my good friend diane is going to put the link to the pattern in the comment section it's a free pattern it's available on the furrows uk site because we wanted to show our uk friends and fans some special love um and we have free patterns on that site as well as the uh furrows us site we have free patterns there so check out the link it's the anytime cardigan and go ahead tell us more about it michelle so um well, tell us what hook did you use to make this beautiful so i beautiful. use if you'll just I'll stand up a moment so you can see it i use the, okay the ebony oh yeah string line it's my four, favorite hook four, four millimeters i'm not very good at like because i'm mirroring uh, there you go there you go yeah. <laughs> love the four millimeter hook um mm -hmm. i really like the lightness of the wood ones as well i I'm a big fan of wood wooden hooks. Um, mm -hmm. So I use this, and this is the Wims Merino DK, which is the Z Twist yarn, um, which I really like working with it. It's a merino and nylon blend, if my memory is correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's right. And it's really nice. Yeah. And yeah. ah, there you go. Fabulous. I love this Thank pink. You. All of my patterns, pretty much, are either pink or blue, with a bit of cream in. Like, they're like my three go to color Those are your colors okay Not even consciously, but when i when i look at my pattern portfolio it's like pink blue pink blue there's the odd bit of green and some rainbows and maybe some gray and cream thrown in but those I, cold i like the kind of cold colors that um like i love olives and um khakis but they don't work on me and like i said i do yeah. design the things that i want to wear that's kind of um, right well, so well, let's talk about that. I, I was talking to another designer and she said the same thing, Crystal of uh, Crystallized Designs. She said that she makes things that she wants to wear. Um, talk about that a little bit, you know. Well, th there's an expression that says if you if you can't if you want something that you can't find, then it, or I've got it on a post-it note here actually, and it says if something doesn't exist, then create it. So that's kind of where I was when I started crocheting garments, I really wanted to make wearable, like you put a lot of time and you know, the cost of yarn goes into making garment. You want to actually wear it and kind mm -hmm. of not just around the house, but wear it out. And there's nothing better than getting stopped by someone and going, oh, I like your sweater and going, yes. I made it. It's I just, made it. <laughs> yeah. And you put all this time into making these projects. I don't want them sitting in the back of a drawer. I want you to like be really proud of your achievements. So that's like, really important to me when i'm when i'm designing it's like would i wear this you know what i feel happy wearing this um and a lot of my earlier designs were based on maybe things i had in my wardrobe that i quite liked and i was thinking how could that work in crochet a lot of the construction i take inspiration from kind of you know off the peg things like certain styles that i know look right for me and whenever i advise people to um you know when they're choosing a pattern to make for a garment i tell them to look at that like what do you like to wear every day what's that one piece of clothing in your wardrobe that you you feel safe and comfortable in have a look yeah. at that and see what see what um see how it's constructed and look at the length and look at how the shoulders are worked and then go and find a crochet pattern that matches that because if you if you start from that place you're kind of already get, getting ahead of that 
Does that make sense? I love that. I love that. I, someone in the comment sec section said that they love that thought process. If something doesn't exist, create it. I love that. And I think that for all of us watching and, you know, all of us here are, are creators ourselves, right? So we're always trying to think of something that we want for ourselves. And then hopefully somebody else would like it too. Guys, in the comment section, if you have any questions or anything that you're thinking about that you would like to talk to Michelle about, feel free to put it in the comments section. Any questions you have for me, feel free to put it in the comment section. So Michelle, in the pattern, can you tell us, you know, how it how it works up? Do you how long it took you to make yours? You know, should somebody who's looking for who's a novice, should they pick this up or should you be intermediate or like who who should make this part again? Well I would say um adventurous beginners could give it a go. I, I think I always find it quite difficult to assess skill levels because some people kind of run with it, but it's not an overly complex um, pattern. If you have made a, a beanie hat in the round where you make a flat circle and you increase it, the premise isn't that different. So it starts at the neckline and you basically work in just circles, but obviously you don't join it and you just increases and the increases are all written in the pattern. The stitch I've used, um, I don't know if you can can see that well it's called the extended it's an extended single crochet stitch okay so i love using extended stitches which again sounds complicated it's not it's a single crochet with a little chain in effectively that's that's all it is that even makes it more, sound more complicated than it is it's not it's not a complicated stitch i love using extended stitches for garments because they have really nice drape um so it just kind of it moves nicely Mm -hmm. And also, it actually they're, they're they're quite opaque, so I know a lot of people with uh, crochet the holes. Hands, they yeah. don't like the holes, and the I really holes. like it because it's it's and it, it's quite a tight um because I've used the, the four millimeter hook. It, it you know it's quite condensed, but um extended crochet stitches do tend to use less yarn than something like a double crochet. So um that's another thing that I factor in when I'm designing is I'm quite aware that for a garment you need more yarn than, than typical so I kind of like to think about makers and you know uh, catering for budgets basically mm -hmm. um I've just seen somebody loves the extended stitch that's yeah awesome. she loves the extended I have trouble with it but I think in my mind I make it more difficult than it needs to be so I'm definitely going to practice my extended um you know my extended single crochet <laughs> and it's just it literally has a little extra step so it's almost somewhere between a single crochet and a double crochet but there's no yarn over at the start so it, you get into that rhythm and you just get used to it it's kind of okay. it's just kind of changing that that little habit in your brain and once you're into it and then i'll, I'll switch to another project and maybe work a double crochet and i'll be like well, what was I doing again? You know how you've been on a big project <laughs> and moving to the next one and you're like, I've just worked complete wrong stitch that whole round. I've done that before. That's I've definitely happened. done that before. I'm um I just started on a fillet crochet blanket. Do you fillet crochet? It's it's something you gotta get used to. Yeah, I've done is it kind of with a, a kind of geometric pattern built in or is it yes. Yes, it's a geometric pattern built in and it has letters in it. So I'm just like, I don't know. My count is all off. I think I frogged last night about four times and I looked at the clock and I was like, oh my God, it's like midnight. Why am I still crocheting? <laughs> but of course I have my furls up. So, you know, I can crochet forever. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Just keep I've going. Done. I've done bits of fillet crochet actually one of my earliest designs actually and it was just after I'd quit my kind of corporate job that I had before I created it it's like a fillet crochet scarf design but I've kind of built in like a keyboard um mm. kind of like a fun novelty so it's, it's kind of like a keyboard I kind of designed it as that I used to work in an office and the aircon we were freezing like because you sat there all day and they pumped the aircon up so we would always have like cardigans or scarves or wraps on the back of our chairs. So I, it was kind of made with that in mind. And so I kind of put a keyboard onto the fillet crochet. So that was just, just a bit of fun. I love it. That's I fun. It, 
I call it the QWERTY rap because it, you know, you have your QWERTY across the top of your keyboard. But um, I so love that's it. my fillet crochet pattern, but it's kind of not traditional fillet crochet, I'll, I'll say. But um, but yeah, I I get that. If you get one stitch off and then the next rows off and then you just it's quite easy to I get was just stitch. like I don't I don't even know. I just I don't even know. I'm just gonna just go. Um uh Michelle said it's so hard switching after a big <laughs> Oh thank you, darling. As uh Michelle said, when you make it with your own little hands it, it feels kind of good. Yes, I did make those. Thank you, uh, Michelle. Uh yeah, it, it's like you know, going from a big project to another project and you're like, where am I? What am I doing? But the one thing that's always a joy is when you're using a furrows crochet hook, it's like, oh, well, I can just look at the hook for a little, <laughs> a little yeah. while and decide what I'm doing. <laughs> I may be having a tantrum with the project, but I'll just look at the, look at the project. Just look at the hook. Just, I just look at my, my swirl or my wood hook and I'm like, you're so pretty. <laughs> Is that weird? Are we weird people, like, loving hooks? <laughs> we weird in the best way, I think. <laughs> I think so, too. So tell me a little bit about when you started crochet. How long have you been crocheting? So I learned to crochet in 2012. And the reason I picked it up, I'm left-handed. And my mum had tried to teach me to knit when I was a child. And we knitted dishcloths for my grandmother. It was always, like, the Christmas present. But she really struggled with the kind of left right hand thing and I remember quite enjoying it but I could never cast on her off and then she kind of gave up and moved on and then um, back in 2012 I am um, it's really hard teaching people of the opposite hand because I've tried to teach right handers and I'm like I can't I can't do this can't get it's like so do we, in the comment section let us know which hand you you crochet with are you right handed are you left handed which one are you I'm a righty <laughs> it's and it's interesting I think when you're left-handed you get used to like flipping everything in your brain so I I learned cro to crochet from YouTube mostly mm -hmm. um, and the reason I started learning was I had hip surgery in 2012 and as I was recovering from that I was really bored and I wanted something because I couldn't get about so I, I was just going a bit mad and I joined Instagram the previous year when Instagram was all about fun filters and you know and I somehow started following some crochets in there. And I remember thinking that just looks kind of fun. So I bought I bought a beginner's kit off Amazon. And as a thing go, I was just addicted. I was absolutely hooked straight away. I was like, I need to know how to do this. And I just, it just went from there. And I, I was never great at following patterns. Like I tended to go off piece quite a lot, even from the start. I'd just be like, oh, I'm just going to try this. And I made a lot <laughs> of that a lot of mistakes like I didn't understand about yarn weight so I remember making a really a, a lovely hat from um, a crochet simplicity and but I just made it in totally because DK yarn is probably more common I think in the UK and in the US okay. it's the worsted and the worsted mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so I was using a lot of US patterns but I didn't appreciate the difference with yarn weight so I, I ended up one time with a hat that was tiny and another time it was massive. and I'm like I, I need to work out what's going wrong here because something's not right so that's when I started getting really interesting it's something's not right digging in oh I made so many mistakes so many disasters but that's how that's how you learn um and in a way it was quite nice that's not definitely having... how you learn yeah yeah and you know there's a lot of swearing and there's a lot of um <laughs> going and looking at the books and being calm and, but um yeah so that's that's how I learned I, I just um went from there really and I just I actually started designing um or, or kind of freestyling patterns so taking patterns and customizing them and you know experimenting with them and I opened my first Etsy shop back in uh, 2013 well it's the same as shop that I have now but and I started selling finished items but I realized quite quickly it was one Christmas I made like 30 million hat beanies and I was like I can't I, I never want to see one of these hats ever again um and I kind of <laughs> did commissions and like I think my favorite random custom customized commission was for um my boss at the time asked me to make, so in the UK we have manual cards and we have these little little 
bulbs on the top of the gear sticks that used to change and hers was metal and it got really cold and she was like can you make me a cover for my gear stick in the car? <laughs> so I'm just like I'll give it a go I think that's probably so I quite like doing those quite random random commissions it's just like well I'll try it that'll be a bit of fun but that really taught me how to make shapes to, do you know what I mean it, it each one I did I kind of learned something new and that's what I love sharing in my blog, that kind of, you know, journey. It's like, well, this is how I learned this because I made all of these mistakes. But yes. this, was, this was where I ended up. So um, that's kind of really how it progressed. I love it. So are you a full-time designer now? Is that your job or do you have a, a secondary well, job? I'm, I, I don't have a kind of formal other job, but I think I'm what they would call a slashy. So I design, I blog. I'm also a tech editor, so I do tech editing for other designers. Um, I do pattern writing um, for yarn brands and kind of, you know, without my name on that kind of stuff. I also mm -hmm. am a VA, so I just do a little bit of everything, really. I do copywriting for, you know, other sort of local businesses like web copy, that kind of stuff. So I do a little bit of everything, but... Do a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, mostly it's, it's and it's, you know, it, it's... It takes a long time to get to the point where, you know, crochet will become a full-time in income. It's, you know, as I say, I started the blog in 2017. And it's kind of, I'm just at that, that place now where I'm starting to let some of the non-crochet stuff go in favour of more of the crochet stuff. But it's um, it's quite nice doing a lot of different things. I think it keeps it fresh. It means that each thing you do, you still appreciate and enjoy like when I just have a couple of days to just sit and design and play with swatches that is my happy place that's but a happy place enjoy, yeah definitely definitely um but I also enjoy I love writing blog posts um mm -hmm. I love interacting with people on social media I I kind of like I've got a Facebook group and you know I love chatting which is about crocheting garments and that's so why I love mm -hmm. chatting to people in there and just talking to people and working out what it is they're struggling with so I can mm -hmm. try to address that. So I love the variety. It's not, I think a lot of people have this image as a crochet designer as all you do is sit and kind of crochet, but you know. <laughs> right. It's like that's about 10% of what I actually, you know, <laughs> of what I do. But um, but yeah, it is my full-time, full-time gig now. So which that's is awesome. Amazing. That's yeah. awesome. Congratulations. It's amazing to do something that you love and that you're passionate about. I do want to talk a little bit about what this person mentioned. Victoria said, as an American in the UK, I had to learn that there was a difference in terminology. Lots of mistakes at first, but now I can switch it somewhat quickly in my brain. Let's talk about the terminology. I always get confused too. Like a, a trouble crochet is a double crochet and a, a double it's crochet. Really, is, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> it's it's like when you start, you're like, but but why is there why? But it doesn't make sense. I don't know why there are two sets of terminologies. I've never quite got to the bottom of that, other than the way crochet has grown over the years. I actually use US te uh, terminology in most of my patterns, and I I will give a UK equivalent, but. Because I learned from YouTube and mostly American YouTubers, I learned with US terms. And actually, in my brain, they make more sense. But as you as you get more used to the terminology, it's quite easy to switch between the two. So I write for some magazines in the UK. I, I um, write patterns um, for them. And I will write those in UK terms. So it does take a little bit of practice. And my advice would always be if you're if you're working a pattern just check it should say in your stitch descriptions it should tell you which terminology that is and is. if you are newer because who hasn't i i've used a, a uk pattern that says double crochet I, i've done it all in my double crochet but what they mean in the us terms is single crochet i'm like well that's why right. i didn't come out of time, isn't it <laughs> that's why it's awfully large <laughs> um and it is frustrating. there seems to be so many of those little um foibles about crochet i mean we look at hook size that's another one there's there's that's another there's one. tons of different types of hook sizes um yes. i tend to stick to millimeters um mm -hmm. i never quite got like i have conversion charts on the blog but i never quite got used to the like i knew a four mil is a g6 but that's pretty much the only us letter one that I can immediately know what that is in millimeters. So I tend to stick with millimeters in yeah. 
and have us to have pearls. That's what we go with is the millimeter. Um, just because it makes more sense. Like that's what you need to know as far as gauge is concerned and all of that. So it's better to go with the number. Like go with the millimeters and you'll be okay. Um, so yeah, that's good stuff. What's your all time favorite stitch? Like what's your favorite stitch? The one your go to stitch. Do you know, if we're talking stitch pattern, I would say it's moss stitch or linen stitch, it's called as well. Mm, I love that. That's a good one. I think that's it, a good. One. Yeah, it just got everything. I'm just about to start another design work, and I'm going to use moss stitch for it. I just, Ooh. I just love it. It's one of those stitches that I think with a stitch pattern, I, it's like getting the Goldilocks, the Goldilocks thing. It's like getting it so it's. It's easy to work so it doesn't make you frustrated. <laughs> it's not boring. So it's getting that right, right. balance between, you know, right. thinking right. and getting bored. And I think moss stitch is one that's that's really moss. great for that. You can just work work it and for me it doesn't get boring. Mm -hmm. And I do like I agree. this as well. Extend um, it. Okay. What stitch do school. you what <laughs> stitch do you stay away from at all costs? You're like, I'm not doing Ooh. it. That's a really difficult one. Um, <laughs> do you know, I was going to say slip stitch, but I'm falling in love with slip stitches now. I've been working slip on stitch, yeah. stuff. Um, I would say just single crochet on its own. On its um, own. It, it yeah. takes a long time. If you're yeah. just doing a single crochet, it, it does take a long time. I agree with you on that. And I do agree with you on a slip stitch. When I first started crocheting, I just thought it was to close things. I didn't think you could do anything else with a slip stitch. And, you know, I started seeing all these patterns that were like a full slip. I'm like, really? You can do that? You know? And that's what I love about crochet. I love how versatile it is and mm. how much you can do, you know? I, I I try to learn how to knit. I'm I'm not giving up on it. I'm not giving up on it, but it's a slow process. Um, you, okay, I'm not alone. Who no. and who's listening that uh, knits and crochet? What's what? What's your favorite? Uh, you know, I have to ask that question all the time. Like, which ones are you all for? <laughs> so you said that your, you so. said your mom um, knitted. Yes. Did yes. you say that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you were just like, no, or? No, I think she she kind of knitted, basically she hasn't knitted for a long time. She she had four kids, so I think she just, you know, and she was a midwife for many years, and I think she it just mm. kind of fell by the wayside, and I keep telling her she should she should pick up her needles again now. She's kind of retired, but, um, yeah. but yeah, she taught, she taught me to knit. She kind of had those, you know, those, those kind of skills that are passed down you know from her mother will have taught her to knit and um so when I I have tried knitting a couple of years ago and um it did take me back and I felt like like it was there in my brain from my childhood but it just needed a bit of polishing up but I still and funnily enough when I started knit trying to knit recently I mm. knit like a crochet which I think is continental like I can't do this kind of this, this thing I'm like oh no that's too takes too long so I kind of <laughs> have this slight weird way of I think it's got continental knitting I'm not sure but um I don't know I, I try when I try I throw the yarn because I don't know I don't know what to do with the yarn like I'm so confused just yeah. give me a hook I'm good um, with the hook just give me the are you a knife grip or are you a pencil grip I'm a knife I'm a nice grip. How about you? Yeah. Nice. I I often have to like when somebody asks me that, I'm like, I don't know how my hook and I need to, <laughs> I need to get to find some yarn to kind of work it work it out. But um Yeah. 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 So nice one, day, one day I'll learn to knit proper, properly, but Me too, but not not right now. Uh, yeah. you know. Uh, not right now. I just love crochet. And with all the hooks that we have and all the beautiful yarn. Have you tried Wander yet? Have you tried Wander yet? yet? You haven't? It's, oh, oh, it's falling. It's so soft. Like I always pick up this color. This is dragon fruit. And I think we might be sold out of dragon fruit. But look at this. That's look beautiful. at this. What's Isn't the uh, pretty? What's the fiber? It's, it's um, acrylic. It's a hundred percent acrylic, but we also have we have it in worsted and we have it in DK. 
it's it's just beautiful. It's it's super soft. Um, from the designers that I've talked to, they said that it's um, really nice for garments. So it might be something you wanna wanna check out yeah. and see about some wine. I love yarn. trying. I love trying new yarns. So yeah. And speaking of which, I want to do a quick giveaway for everybody who's listening. If you can tell me what yarn Michelle used to make the Anytime Cardigan, you could be a winner of a $25 Furls gift card. So post in the comments, what yarn did Michelle use to make the Anytime Cardigan? Put that in the comments. I will announce a winner tomorrow um, and you'll get a $25 gift card. It's always nice to have a, a little something extra to make a purchase on the Furl site. Michelle, this has been such a wonderful conversation. And I did want to say earlier on, I heard your birds chirping and I was just so happy. Oh my goodness. I love the sound of birds. I think they, they show life. Right? I'm very fortunate that I live near a meadow and at this time of day, so in the UK it's 6.40, so it's kind of early evening, they all go really crazy and they're chattering away and there's a bunch of starlings in the kind of brambles outside my house and it's so calming to just so listen to. Calming. Um, so calming, yeah. so calming. I had to say that. I just, I love the sound of birds <laughs> Right, I did. They were awesome. They were awesome. Um, Over again, this year, I, I got um, I got myself a pair of binoculars and like a bird identifier book because we've been at home so much. I've become a little bit of a geek, a bit of a geek. Look about at bird you. So, so, what kind of birds? What kind of birds did you say you have? We have starlings. Yeah. There's a lot of starlings. Sorry. Lots of sparrows. Um, there's some blue tits. A couple of green finches. They're all quite small, kind of hedgerow birds. Um, okay. And because I also live, live near the river, we get swans, we get herons, um, a few ducks. It's, it's I love it. Amazing, amazing. I'm I so love it. I love nature. And I think that, you know, as an artist, it definitely helps to inspire you when you can look at nature it definitely inspires because wow it's like wow look at the things that are surrounding me you know but yeah i can geek out on that too yes <laughs> we can have a whole nother conversation about a whole nother <laughs> conversation about the birds and the trees and all the wonderful things um thank you guys so much for hanging out with us uh for this short live we just wanted to come and let you know that you can find the pattern on the furls uk site it's called the Anytime Cardigan. It's beautiful. I'm not going to say the yarn. I want you to go and find out what yarn did Michelle use to make the Anytime Cardigan. You could win a $25 gift card. Again, Michelle, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Yay! All right. <laughs> Guys. Everybody. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this live. Make sure you comment what yarn Michelle used in the making of the lovely Anytime Cardigan. Again, you can find that on the Furls UK site. Um, get your pattern, get your yarn, get your hook if you don't have one. Now's the time to do so. And don't forget to join me tomorrow for a very very special maker story interview it's going to be so much fun and we have some great surprises for you guys thanks again for watching now get back to that work in progress you know you have something that you're working on you need to finish talk with you soon bye